Cause I got a couple reasons why to take a look at a book called the Bee Gees. Well, learn a thing or two about God's plan. I know you're gonna like it when you finally understand. So come on, everybody, let's read the Bee Gees now. Hey, it's me, Phil, and we're back at it, looking at the book of Ephesians. Which Paul wrote to tell us about God's big plan. To reconcile, to heal broken relationships, and turn enemies back into friends. To bring me back to my true love, grace. Close, but not quite. Grace is a gift we haven't earned unmerited favor. In this case, it's God's gift of the forever kind of life with him. Through Jesus, we can be God's friends instead of his enemies. And we get ninja powers! Uh, uh, we talked about this. Probably not ninja powers, but God's power shows up in our lives in lots of amazing ways. We become more loving, more kind, more brave. Sometimes God's power heals people who are sick or helps them do amazing things. Are we done? It seems like that's enough. Oh, no, there's more. Uh, Emily, can you read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 15? Sure thing, Mr. Phil. <clears throat> Remember that in the past you were without Christ. You are not citizens of Israel, and you had no part in the agreements with the promise that God made to his people. You had no hope, and you did not know God. Thus, at one time you were far away from God. But now, in Christ Jesus, you are brought near to God through the blood of Christ's death. Because of Christ, we now have peace. Christ made both Jews and non-Jews one people. They were separated as if there were a wall between them. But Christ broke down that wall of hate by giving his own body. The Jewish law had many commands and rules, but Christ ended that law. Christ's purpose was to make the two groups of people become one new people in him. By doing this, Christ would make peace. I don't get it. Yeah, Jews and non-Jews. What are those? Oh, a good question. Now we have to go back to the Old Testament about a thousand years earlier. Do you remember the Israelites? They were God's children in the Old Testament. They were set apart for God. Right. Way back in the Old Testament, God picks one group of people to be his people. That group became the nation of Israel. Later on, after Israel was taken over by other nations, most Israelites who still followed God were from a part of Israel called Judah. And people started calling them Jews. I get it. That makes sense. Jews from Judah. Now, the important part is that the Jews had lots and lots of rules to follow if they wanted God's blessing. They had to work hard. Some of them got pretty good at following all these rules and felt that they were better than everyone who wasn't a Jew. They started seeing the world as two groups, Jews and Gentiles, a word that basically means not a Jew. So they saw the whole world as Jews and not a Jews? Right. And Jews were good and not a Jews were bad. Jews were God's friends and Gentiles, or not a Jews, were God's enemies. Jews started to really dislike non-Jews or Gentiles and non-Jews started disliking Jews right back. By the time of Jesus, Jews and Gentiles did not get along. Okay, so who is Paul talking to in Ephesus? People that were Jews or people that were Gentiles? Ah, here's the point. Paul and all the other apostles like Peter and John were Jews who had become followers of Jesus. But in Ephesus, most of the people who had started following Jesus were Gentiles. Wait. So they were supposed to be enemies? Exactly. They weren't supposed to eat together, talk together, anything. It was actually against Jewish law for a Jew to eat food with a non-Jew. Now let's read what Paul wrote one more time. Because of Christ, we now have peace. Christ made both Jews and non-Jews one people. They were separated as if there were a wall between them. But Christ broke down that wall of hate by giving his own body. The Jewish law had many commands and rules, but Christ ended that law. Christ's purpose was to make the two groups of people become one new people in him. By doing this, Christ would make peace. I get it. So the wall that Jesus busted up was all the rules that kept Jews and Gentiles apart, that made them enemies. And the peace that Paul talks about is between Jews and Gentiles. In Jesus, 
They're no longer enemies. They're friends. Reconciliation. It's a beautiful thing. I actually agree with the little guy. Okay, Emily, read verses 19 to 22. I'm on it. So now you non-Jews are not visitors or strangers. Now you are citizens together with God's holy people. You belong to God's family. You believers are like a building that God owns. That building was built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself is the most important stone in that building. That whole building is joined together in Christ. And Christ makes it grow and become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Christ, you too are being built together with the Jews. You are being built into a place where God lives through the Spirit. He's talking about Gentiles. He says, you too are being built together with the Jews into a building where God lives. That's amazing. It really is. You see, the Jews had a building in Jerusalem, in Judah. It was called the temple, and it was supposed to be the place where God lived. But now, Paul is saying that God himself is building a new place to live, a new temple. And instead of using stones, he's using people. And not just the Jewish people. Everyone can be a part of it. The folks at Ephesus must have been really excited to hear this. I bet they were. But what does this mean to kids today? We don't think about being Gentiles anymore. You're right. We no longer see the world as Jews and Gentiles. Not like when Paul was alive in the land around Israel. But we do see the world as friends and enemies. And quite often, if someone doesn't live where we live, or look like we look, or talk like we talk, it's easy to think of them as an enemy, not a friend. What Paul is saying is that Jesus knocks down the wall between friend and enemy. Anyone, anywhere, who follows Jesus is a friend. In Jesus, there are no more enemies. Reconciliation! God's big plan! See you next time.